Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. What a testimony, huh? I always do the things that please Him. That's quite the testimony. Um, I'd like you to keep my dad in prayer because, um, I don't know, he's been seen walking around the nursing home. He can't walk, but he's been walking. And then he realizes he can't walk and he falls. So they've moved him closer to the nurse's station. I don't know. This is the craziest thing. I mean, it's got to be some kind of disconnect in the brain or something. I, I don't understand. I remember one night, many, many moons ago, driving across the New York Thruway about 3 o'clock in the morning, and I saw these lights go out in front of me of a big truck. Just went out. I'm like, oh, that's weird. So I geared down and got slow and pulled over. And sure enough, this guy had drove right into a bridge abutment. Cab over Peterbilt and went right through the windshield. That's back before we wore seat belts. I mean, he just went flying. And uh, I'm sitting there, this guy's big guy, big old farm guy, bib overalls, he's walking around. I'm like, dude, uh, I I'm seeing this truck. I mean, it's completely demolished. Trans engine right through the sleeper. I mean, the whole truck is just nothing left. And this guy's walking around. I'm like, dude, um, you should probably lay down or sit down or something because, you know, I mean, I understand when you have adrenaline, it's pretty powerful stuff, but when the nurses told me this about my dad, I thought about that moment, you know, because here's this guy that's I don't know, he probably could pick up a thousand pounds cause you, unless somebody told him, hey, that's too heavy, and then he'd probably drop it. You know, he's just one of them kind of guys. But it's strange. How do, how do you, a guy that can't walk, is found walking around? I, I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, they've seen him walking. Anyhow, so just keep Dad in your prayer because uh, this is crazy, you know. I mean, we've had many people in this church that have gotten old and they fall, right, because they think they can walk. And it's hard, you know. Getting older is hard. You, uh, hey, yeah. <laughs> I resemble that remark. I remember I bought this suit when I flew up to bury my grandmother in New York. And I watched my wife laugh at me this morning while I was buttoning this thing here. <laughs> but um, I'm still wearing it. But you know, it's funny because you do, you get older. And there, you know, when you wear good dress pants, they have buttons and snaps and all these buckles and stuff. Well, a little earlier, I wasn't sure I was going to get it all undone before I had to use the bathroom. <laughs> Now, that's a fear that I never dreamed I would have. So I'm thinking to myself, boy, I must be getting older, too. So when I reassembled everything, I didn't do that first buckle because I said, hey, I'm not going through that again. <laughs> Anyways, you know, these are the little issues that we have just being human beings. It's things that happen. You know, it's not easy. Uh, Getting older is, is not for sissies. You know, you got to be tough. And uh, I don't know. We have to have a lot of respect for people, for our brothers and sisters, because we, we don't know what people's road has been, and you know, and, and where they're at. I mean, you see Lois, she's going through Publix and she's putting on a smiley face and she's pushing her cart trying to get her groceries but her granddaughter's in Spain 
fell or had some kind of terrible accident and nobody speaks that language. Nobody knows what hospital she's in. I mean, she's in a coma. I mean, that's some, that's some heavy duty stress. You just really don't know what's going on in a person's life. So we should treat everybody with a certain amount of respect and caution to, hey, you know, we don't know. We don't know. Because we, we are quick to judge things. I know I am. I grabbed a hold of this guy. Well, I didn't really grab a hold of him, but I almost did. Fella that was just relieving himself on the sidewalk. And I was pretty upset about it. And um, I did give him a tongue lashing. And he went away with his head down. But I don't think he'll ever do that again. At least not in my territory. But, you know, I don't know that guy. I don't know his deal. And there's some things I'm not going to put up with. And we all have to have respect for ourselves and other people in that way, too. You know, there's a lot of crazy things going on in this world today. You know, I, I'm not going to put up with some guy dressed up as a girl following one of my granddaughters into a bathroom. I'm not going to sit and be silent. Okay? That's not going to happen. And I don't know why the church is so silent with the things that are going on in this world today. Maybe they're afraid of persecution. I have no idea. But I would love to hand Miss Tarsia a mic because she's got something that she shared with me today. And I'd love her to share it with you guys. Happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Tarsia. Uh, yes, he did ask me to share. I thought he had forgotten, so I'm going to start with a Bible verse, <laughs> because the power of the, the Word of God that gives us strength, so that, that's going to give me strength. So, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principality, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age. That is in Ephesians 6, verse uh, 12. So... I read that to you because I have shared with uh, Ray today something very interesting that is happening in the Christian world. And uh, I don't know if you guys are aware, but I will share with you very quickly. Um, and please don't take my word for it. Do your own research. I have taught many years ago that don't believe everything everybody says. Do your research and study for yourself. Amen. So, with that said, I will read. The Gatlinburg Seventh-day Adventist Church in Maryland is a vibrant Hispanic church group north of Washington, D.C. They are in the conference of Potomac Conference. Last month, at the request of the church members, catch that, Last month, at the request of the church members, the church board invited Pastor Stephen Bohr from Secrets Unsealed. He teaches a lot of prophecy, if you guys don't know Stephen Bohr. He accepted the invitation. The meetings are scheduled for August 16th and 19th, coming up. Uh, Bohr recently presented a series on the end of times talking about uh, uh, many things about the end of times and the uh, spirit prophecy and the great controversy, right? Mm -hmm. According to multiple reports, the pastor of that church has been doing everything he can do possible to stop Bohr from coming. He claims he's acting on behalf, catch that, Pontamac Conference. Mm -hmm. That is more. <laughs> This Sabbath, uh, on breaking the stone to anyone, the pastor called a business meeting. So this pastor called a business meeting and um, after the youth program. The meeting took place at the church, and it gives the address. If you want the address, you ask me and I'll give it to you. The pastor told the church that their church board is no longer valid or recognized. 
they are now in rebellion with the conference of Potomac Conference for not canceling Pastor Boar. And if persisted in having Boar come, they would sub subsequently be dissolved and the members deleted. On Sabbath evening, he stood from the pulpit and gave the church an ultimatum. They either all complied with the conference and joined him, or they should all leave the building and abandon the church. That is more. This, is, this breaks my heart. The church leaders, and that comes to us here, <laughs> The church, I just want to bring that to this church leaders. The church leaders have requested multiple times to meet with the conference leaders, but the pastor said they would not meet with the church. If they leave as a whole to another conference, they have been told that they must immediately relinquish their savings, offerings, and tithe. Stephen Bohr is still coming to the Gatlinburg Church in uh, Washington. And as well, he might. He is an ordained Seventh-day Adventist pastor and is good and regular standing. And he is invited to come to speak to the, the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Washington in a different address. At that meeting that that pastor had with the leaders of the church, 99% disagree with the pastor and walked out. 1%, one person stayed. I don't want to be that 1%. And I hope the Seventh-day Adventist Church in New Smyrna Beach will stand up for what is wrong and stand up for what is right as leaders, as leaders. This is a call for leaders and members because all the members stood up. So please study your Bible and don't fall in a trap. Don't fall in a trap. Amen. You can just shut it off and keep it. It's fine. Um, amazing, huh? The time that we live in. It's, yeah, it's, it's craziness. Craziness. Um, all right, we're open to John 8, right? I want to um, start at verse 25. Then said they unto him, this is Jesus they're speaking to, Who art thou? And Jesus said, un, say, saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge of you, but he that sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I have heard of him. I speak those things which I have heard of him. What is, that what is that telling you? That Jesus is in the will of God speaking the Father's words. Correct? Did, does he, did he seek to take credit for anything? No. No. He's constantly pointing to the Father. Always. Do, do you know this is very God and the humility of Him is beyond reckoning? Reckoning. Think about that. If you learn nothing else today, think of the humility of Jesus. We can learn a lot just from that right there. They understood not that he spake to them of the Father. Then, then said Jesus unto them, When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall you know that I am he, and that I do nothing of myself. But as the Father hath taught me, I speak these things. I mean, there it is a couple times. And it's all over the Bible. I and my Father are one, Jesus says, right? Now, it says here that when, he, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then shall ye know that I am He, and that I do nothing of myself. Now, do, you, do you reckon that they did know when they lifted Him up? 
Who are we talking about here? How can they read the Bible and miss the fact that he was very God? He was the Lamb of God. How, how deceived can one be in and of themselves? Is it enough just to read your Bible? Is the Bible enough? Hello? To some people, this book is just a novel. It's just a book. This is a road map, brothers and sisters. That's what the Bible is. The Bible is a road map that leads you somewhere to a relationship with Jesus Christ. And without that relationship with Jesus Christ, the Bible will do you nothing. It's, it's a road map. Think about the fact of Saul, right? Saul of Tarsus. A Jew of Jews, right? Studied with Gamaliel. He had all these credentials. And he should know more than anybody, right? Studied the word. But missed who the word was writing about. Think about that. Now, after the stoning of Stephen, that is where Paul was beginning to become, or Saul was beginning to become Paul. Because he's holding the clothes of these men that are stoning Stephen, right? Stephen's being plummeted with rocks unto death, right? blood I'm sure everywhere but the Bible talks about Stephen's face shining like an angel he has no ill will for these people that are stoning him who does that make you sound like Jesus yeah his face shining like an angel he cries out for these people that did not hold this sin against them can you imagine that? That's not human, brothers and sisters. That's not human. And it says, I see Jesus. Stephen said, I see Jesus standing on the right hand of glory. What does it mean in the Bible when Jesus is standing? It means judgment has come. Don't let, as Tarsia said, don't take my word for anything. Go study this stuff out for yourself. When Jesus stands up, judgment has been pronounced. The gospel was going from the, from the Jews to the Gentiles. Okay? That's when it happened. That was the change. And this Saul guy, he may have had everything wrong. And he knew all these things, but because of his teaching and the way his teachers brought about, you know, think about this. How many, how many denominations are there? Huh? How many, Ricky? Over 42,000. 42,000 denominations. Christian denominations, all claiming, all claiming to preach the truth. Come and hear the truth. You know, they're not saying, hey, I'm going to deceive you. Come to my church because I'm going to trip you up and make you think things that are wrong. Yes, Miss Kyla. Speak loud. No, no stupid question. Go ahead. When you say 42,000 denominations, do you mean 42,000 Correct. No. Christian churches. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Many, many different denominations. Thank you. Correct. Thank you. So here you got here you got Saul all all mixed up. And we know from the Bible that he's heading off. On his horse, right? Where's he going? To persecute the church, right? 
But all along the way that he's doing this little horsey ride, there's something in his conscience that's bothering him. Because what he had witnessed isn't humanly possible. Okay? That kind of forgiveness, we're not capable of, brothers and sisters. But you know what we are called to do? To forgive like that. Amen. We are only going to accomplish this through the Holy Spirit. Being in the will of God. Are we in the will of God? We can read our Bibles, study a bunch of stuff, and doesn't Jesus say in the end there'll be these people that say, I did this and I did that and I cast out demons and Jesus says, I never knew you. Never knew you. What does knowing somebody mean? It means you have to spend time together, right? There has to be intimacy. A drilling down and a focus that puts everything else aside. And Jesus says that you will find me, right? When you search for me with your whole heart, right? Does that mean with 99.97% of your heart? Think about that. What have you ever done in your life that you made 100% commitment to? Maybe saving somebody from a fire, running in the house. Think about it. I mean, what in your life have you really went after 100%? Because you know what? It's human nature to hold back, right? Look, I know full well human nature. If I'm standing out there and I'm handing you this big old bucket of cookies, I say, here, have a cookie. But you know what? I'm looking that biggest one. I'm hoping you're not taking that one because I got my eye on that one, right? Think about it. That's human nature. That's who we are. Thank God that's all going to be different. Because you know what? Jesus hands out this bucket of cookies. He's hoping you're taking the biggest one. He wants you to have what's best. Do we think like that? Do we want that? But Paul, he's on this journey... He's going to persecute the church, and God calls this fella to lead him. Because he's the leader of the church at this, at this area, right? Paul falls off his, his horse because he has this vision of brightness that knocks him down. And right away, he knows that this that has knocked him off his horse is God, right? Because he says, Lord, who art thou, right? And Jesus says, what? I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. What do you think that did to him? Slightly humbling. Slightly humbling. Yeah. You know what? Paul, Saul became Paul at that very moment. He didn't know everything that he needed to know, but at that moment, Saul became Paul. He knew Isaiah very well. Yeah. He knew about he, he, he was a changed man. He was, he was who God, Jesus said, he's my chosen vessel, right? 
the Bible talks about Paul's thorn in the flesh, and there's some great minds that can make an argument for other things, but my opinion is that his sight was never the same after that blast of light. I believe he had some eye issues. But his eyes were so focused on Jesus after that <coughs> that he didn't need physical eyes anymore. Did you ever watch Kung Fu as a kid? I used to love that show. That guy was blind. <coughs> That's a whole other story. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> Sounded like something John would have said, right? Anyways. He spent three and a half years in the desert with Jesus, getting plugged in, right? Three and a half years. Getting all these things that are, were plugged in the wrong places because he had all the wiring, right? He had all the study. He knew the words. But how did things get so twisted and changed that he missed the point? Because his teachers were teaching with a bias and a twist leaning on their own understanding absolutely and in verse 29 it says and he that sent me is with me the father hath not left me alone for I do always those things that please him always those things that please him. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? No man cometh to the Father but by him. So how is it that we have all these other denominations all claiming this same Bible? Because things are twisted People come at things from a particular point of light, right? And they build their whole theology on that point of light. And you know what? In this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, is more light than all the rest of them, in my opinion, because I've studied them and I've seen them and I've walked with them. But still, even though we have all this light, we can be just as screwed up. Amen. Just as screwed up. Because you can study your Bible, but if you're not, you're not focused on Him whom it's written about. Pastor Ricky always sends me stuff, and I love it, because I think he does it because he knows it's going to steer my sermon a certain way. <laughs> I, I used to... Uh, be a great stealer of other people's sermons, but I don't, I haven't done that stuff in a long, long time, so I just give what I believe God's given to me. But I want to read this. This is um, CT, which is counsels, I think, to teachers and students and something. But anyways, it's CT 438.3. And I'm going to read down a little bit here. Christ... The great teacher sought to win the minds of men from the contemplation of earthly things. Is, it, is that a hard job to do today? Look what's going on in the world. It's so crazy here. I mean, you try to get focused on something here and, and something blows up right in front of you. You know, and then, oh, look here. And then this, and the, the world is crazy. You know, I, I just had heard this thing. NASA just came through with this. And this is a government entity, NASA, right? They're talking about, I don't know if you're familiar with atmospheric rivers. Do you know anything about that? It's way above my pay grade, too. But there's water that's up in the upper atmosphere. They're like rivers up there. And it's trapped, so to speak. And because of the volcanoes and things that are way out of my pay grade, I don't understand, it's causing these things to be bound in such a way that they're not letting heat out. And it's always supposed to happen the other way, but for some phenomenon beyond my understanding, it's, it's working the other way. And they're claiming that this 
could be something that's a pattern for maybe the next couple years. You, have you noticed it's a little hot outside? Yeah, I mean, it used to be in the summertime in Florida, you'd walk outside maybe one day a year and your glasses would fog right up. Now it's like every day. But there is somebody out there that's the prince and the power of the air, right? And even though God is in control of everything or control of nothing, he's allowed this enemy a pretty long leash. And, and